Hi friends, it's Heike and I'm back home in Maryland. If you listened to last week's episode, you know I was in Hawaii for six weeks working and having fun and recorded my last episode in the closet in the apartment. But now I'm back home in my studio with my nice microphone and everything else I need. And today's episode is all about something that we are affected at one point or another, and especially after 50, and that is bone health. We are starting to lose bone mass after the age of 30. It's pretty early, and we break down more bone than we can build. One of my clients just showed me her DEXA scan the other day and to show me how her bone density increased, decreased, or fluctuated. They measured the bone density in the spine, the total hip, and the femoral neck. She had her results over the last years, and so we were able to see what was going on based on the test. She's also a breast cancer survivor and had taken tamoxifen as recommended by her doctor to help increase the bone density, but had to stop taking the drug because she and her doctor found that the risks and the side effects of tamoxifen outweighed the benefits of that. She also had the first signs of osteoarthritis in her hands and feet. Now, today I want to wrap this all up and together in an episode where we talk about osteoporosis versus osteoarthritis and the importance of bone health over 50. I'll see you in a minute. I'm Heike Yates, a fitness and nutrition coach with 30 years of experience. I empower women over 50 to take back their health and strength to lead a vibrant life. Right now, you're joined by thousands of women over 50 around the world who stop dimming their light and instead ignite their spark. On this podcast, I do what I do best taking complicated information about fitness, nutrition, and mindset strategies, and breaking it down into baby steps that are simple, actionable, and sustainable, so you can implement them into your life. I regularly interview some of the most inspiring women who share their honest stories on how they went from their worst to their best life, so that you know not alone in your struggles. Join me as we redefine what aging looks and feels like by taking action and saying, yes, I can. This is the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I would love it if you could help out the show by hit subscribe if you're an Apple podcast listener. And if you're on Spotify, hit follow. And on Stitcher, at Pursue Your Spark to your favorites. This will help so many other people find the show, learn, grow, and connect with the guests on the show. That will be awesome. Thank you. Today, osteoporosis versus osteoarthritis and the importance of bone health over 50. Now, I have arthritis in my knee. I'm a runner, and you may say, or many people say, oh, you shouldn't be running, Heike. This is really, really bad. Well, there's many things to think about, and we're talking about this in depth today and the difference between the two and exercises and nutrition and all kinds of wonderful things. But I was training for a marathon at that time. I was running marathons and I was running miles and miles and miles and my weekly mileage was 60. If you're a runner, you know that is a lot of mileage. You know, I'm an age grouper. I'm not a super duper young athlete that takes away, sweeps the course and is number one in everything. But I want to stay fit now. I love running because it's so easy. You put on your shoes and off you go. But I was at the 60 mile mark for that week and my knee was hurting like the dickens. I was like, this is strange. I'm so healthy. I am strength training. I'm doing Pilates. I'm doing all these things. And my knee started ballooning, got really, really swollen. And I remember this only from 
my mom or much older people. So that was about 15 years ago where I ran so many miles. And I thought, holy cow, I'm getting old. Yeah, I know, right? Can you relate to that? And I said, all right, I can do this. But my knee hurt so bad that every step I took, it hurt. So I completely freaked out. I told my running coach back then that I'm done with running. This is crap. My knee hurts. I'm not going to do this again. So very over impulsive. But then I learned about arthritis or osteoarthritis and what it does, and what you should and shouldn't do, what will help, uh, how you can influence the bone health with nutrition and your diet. And I just took a step back and I said, for my body, I really need to look at what works for me. I love running. I want to keep going with it. I don't want to ditch it. This is also the time where I started biking a little bit more. And over the past 15 years, I've became a triathlete. So I swim, bike and run because of keeping my joints healthy and less stress. So I do Pilates, as you know, a lot. I love, love, love Pilates strength training. I swim, bike and run. And when my knee doesn't feel good, which it has days, that it's just out of the blue. It's not liking the weather. And usually I know, don't laugh. When it's humid outside, my knee is hating humidity. Well, in the Washington, D.C. area, you can imagine what that feels like. But I just really listened to my body and said, okay, I can keep up with my sport, but I need to do less of it, shorter distance, and be smarter in cross-training. With that said, what is osteoporosis versus osteoarthritis? Many people confuse osteoporosis with osteoarthritis. So today, let's look at the similarities and the differences between these conditions and what you can do to relieve or even prevent those conditions. And as we age, there is no way about it that we are going to encounter one, the other, or both. So what is osteoporosis? Let's start out with this. Osteoporosis is a condition in which the bones become less dense and more likely to fracture. Fractures are not um, uncommon as we age, but, but bone loss can also result in the loss of height, severe back pain, and changes in posture, which affect how we walk, and that can result in permanent disabilities. And the interesting thing about osteoporosis is also known as the silent killer, as it just progresses undetected until you have a fracture. So it's different than osteoarthritis. When you look around and you see older folks walking around and they're stooped over or they're complaining when they come to Pilates, they complain about back pain, especially lower back. Some have arthritis also in the neck. They hope that they can rebuild their bones, which is not really possible. But we can start now, today, when you're listening to this podcast, some strategies that I'm sharing with you in a little while of how to stop, prevent, or relieve some of the pain that we get from these conditions. So what are the risk factors? There's always a risk factor. Thin and small frame people, a family history of osteoporosis, uh, being postmenopausal, and particularly having an early menopause. So these are the two categories of menopause that is particularly affected by osteoporosis. Now, when you have uh, abnormal uh, absence of your period, not because of sports or overtraining, which is a different topic, but you're just doing your normal exercises, you know you're healthy, you're, you're not a crazy nutter like me and doing Ironmans, but you know something is off when you miss your period more than once. And that has nothing to do with being in menopause just yet. Then the use of certain medications, things that we take for asthma, thyroid deficiency, seizures, lupus, these are all medications that affect our bone health, low calcium intake, uh, lack of physical exercise. So not exercising is definitely a 
risk factor, smoking. I mean, smoking is just, I know I talk about it every now and again when it comes to nutrition in the podcast, but you can just assume smoking is a no-go. And in addition to that, we have excessive alcohol intake, and that is more than one or two glasses a day for a woman, which is every day. That's a lot, if you ask me. So lots of alcohol, meaning you drink more than these one or two glasses glasses a day. That's excessive alcohol intake. So these are good things to keep in mind when you listen to the podcast or this episode and you're thinking, am I getting enough calcium? Am I exercising enough? What medications do I take? Because the doctors oftentimes don't tell you what else the medications cause other than helping you with whatever you, with asthma, let's use asthma as an example, that they affect your bone health. And it's somewhere in the fine print that you have to barely be able to read that you find out about that. So also, if you take different medications, make sure that they do not cancel each other out and then end up with attacking basically your bone health. So how do we detect low bone density? And I mentioned the DEXA scan earlier. Osteoporosis is diagnosed by what's called a mineral, a bone mineral density test. So a DEXA scan, which is a safe and painless way to detect low bone density, which is what my client had. You can also check out the episode with Dr. Justine Bernard on how to build better bones. The link is in the show notes to go back what we talked about when it comes to building better bones. And it's never too late to build better bones. And as she said in the episode, you need to build up your bone bank. So the link will be in the show notes. Now, what is osteoarthritis? Also, OA osteoarthritis is a general term for conditions that mostly affect the joints and the surrounding tissues, like my knee hands, fingers, toes, hips, the neck are some of the places that we commonly experience osteoarthritis. And it's never simple, right? Two common types of arthritis are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoarthritis is a painful degenerative joint disease that often involves the hips, neck, knees, lower back, and small joints like the fingers and hands in your body. And this condition usually develops because of an injury or from repeating the same motion over and over. And I was thinking of playing tennis and the tennis elbow. Uh, Also the muscles in the hand and the bones in the hand from holding the tennis racket and consistently hitting a ball hard over the net. So if you're a tennis player, and I used to work with tennis players in Pilates and also golfers, and we were talking about these side effects of being active in a sport or in the knees when we have too much body weight or, as I mentioned in my case, long distance running. So eventually the injury or the repeated motion wears away the cartilage which is a cushion at the end of the bones in the joint. So you have the bone and at the end, there's a little pillow. I always, when I see a DEXA scan, uh, a um, X-ray, I see, I I envision, I see those little cushions there and I always think of a little marshmallow between the joints. That's what I think about it. So that wears away. The result is that the bones are rubbing together and creating a grating sensation. And you may have heard, or somebody told you, did you just hear that? My knees are like popcorn. They crackle and pop. Well, my friend, this is a sign of osteoarthritis. And that's also a sign that heavy squats and lunges are not your friend. So as they're grating together at the end, Your joint flexibility because of it is reduced and bone spurs, little bony spurs develop on that spot. And this starts the swelling. And you have seen, again, I go back to much older people than maybe on the listening to the show, but you may have seen your grandma 
having really thick knuckles on their hand and the hands are really stiff, that is osteoarthritis. When do we feel osteoarthritis or the, the side effects of it is when you either after an exercise <laughs> or during an exercise or when you do nothing at all. So if you ask me, this is really terrible because it's not really, you could say, oh, if I exercise, I feel better. Some people do, others not. So you need to really listen to your body and say, all right, I just ran 20 miles. Man, my knees really hurt. It was all on cement. I would recommend going on the trail where it's soft or cross training by going for a walk or running shorter walks. So there's many things we can play around when osteoarthritis is limiting your exercise. Now, rheumatoid arthritis, on the other hand, is an autoimmune inflammatory disease that usually involves, again, fingers, thumbs, wrist, elbows, shoulders, knee, feet, and ankles, all the little bony parts. Here's in rheumatoid arthritis or RA, the body releases an enzyme that attacks your own healthy tissue and they destroy the lining of the joints. Again, resulting in swelling, pain, stiffness, uh, malformation, as I just pointed out with the hands and the swollen joints and reduced function and movement. I remember back in the days when I had a woman in my exercise class and uh, we're doing aerobics and weights and she said, Heike, I can't. And it was a relative young woman back then. She was probably in her forties. Well, it's our age group, right? And back then I was just much younger and she said, I can't hold the weight, Heike. Look at my hands. It hurts so badly. So we just started doing hand squeezes to help her mobilize the joints a little bit. So, Osteoarthritis and osteoporosis share similar coping strategies and after being properly diagnosed, you usually start with physical therapy. So if you feel that things are just not right, I always say go see a medical professional, see your doctor. You want to know what you're dealing with. I'm a Pilates coach. I'm a nutrition coach. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physical therapist. I know so much because after 30 years, I almost feel I've seen most conditions that most people are dealing with have learned from other physical therapists. Like I used to work for Justine Bernard, Dr. Justine Bernard, and learned a lot along the way through my clients, but also through their doctors and the assistance they got from from the physical therapist but always check know what you're dealing with don't what i call futz around and then once you know it's a go we can say okay eliminate this do this do that and the other also check out my post on how to prevent and relieve joint pain over 50 i got some really great exercises and ideas for you in that post. That's a blog post and also a podcast. So if you were listening on the go, now let me go back to the hand story. This is something that many people don't know. I used to teach water aerobics classes and that included water arthritis and water walking classes. I used to work at a health club and I was the fit aerobics director and i also inherited the pool department and i that the water is still not my friend and i'm still hesitant when i swim in my triathlons but my boss said well this is your department now you need to start teaching classes and i was like oh there's all this chlorine and all of that i don't really want to go in there although and then it's really loud and you have swimmers and if you've been to the pool, you know the environment. You may be a swimmer and you go, oh God, here's the aerobics class again. Or vice versa, you're in the water aerobics class and you go, all oh, those swimmers take the lanes or you wish the water would be warmer. And it's always something at the pool. But I said, all right, I love to learn. I want to know more. I'm going to learn how to teach 
these classes, including water arthritis classes. And I'm going to add, uh, record a little video for you so you can do, if you have arthritis in your hands and your feet, you can do these exercises every day to help you get more mobility in your hands and your feet and less pain and swelling. These exercises won't stop it, but it will, it will make it feel a lot better. Promise. Best way to do these exercises is when you're in warm water. Like if you're doing dishes and the water runs hot, do those exercises that I'll record for you. And the link is again in the show notes. It will make a world a difference in the feet and in the hands. Now on to the five ways to prevent or relieve osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Number one, of course, include calcium in your diet and vitamin D. The Mayo Clinic says women up to the age of 50 and men up to the age of 70 need about a thousand milligrams of calcium. Women over 50 and men over 70 should get 1200 milligrams of calcium daily. So again, check with your doctor what the best calcium supplement is. Um, there are many medications that are approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administrations, the FDA, to treat osteoporosis, but changes in your diet are really important as well. Eating foods rich in calcium like broccoli, dairy, oranges, figs, bok choy, and there's so many other foods that you can get your calcium naturally from um, that there is really no reason for you not to get enough calcium. It will take a little bit of, of rethinking things, but I put a link in the show notes for you for the National Osteoporosis Foundation where you can find a guide to cal calcium-rich foods and how much that actually is. Because when you think about it, how much is 1,200 milligrams of calcium? I don't really know. So go look at the guide. Now for vitamin D, here we go again. Women up to the age of 50 and men up to the age of 70 need 1,000 milligrams. And then over 50 and over 70, again, 1,200 milligrams, similar to the calcium. So it's super, super clear, not confusing but get your calcium in and look at your diet. You may want to start a little food log to actually see what you're eating and then compare it to that list with calcium rich foods. If you're getting enough of the ones that are on the list. Number two is eating lean protein. And if you've been listening to the show, you know, protein is the powerhouse, whether it's a, plant-based protein or animal protein, it's the way to go because protein is one of the building blocks of bone, not only muscle. The recommended dietary allowance for, for us is 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram. That's 2.2 pounds of body weight per day. So for a woman who's 150 pounds, that means you eat 55 grams of protein a day. And for a 180 pound guy, it's 65 grams. Well, you go and hike it. What does that mean? I don't know grams. We're here in the US, we don't do grams. Remember, or you may not remember if you're a new listener to the podcast, how we measure our protein. I always recommend to eat a lean protein with each meal. And if you look at the palm of your hand, yep, so I mean, look at your hand right now, and then look at the palm, not the fingers, not the thumb. This is one serving of protein. When it comes to fish, salmon, chicken, uh, tofu, for beans and legumes, you measure it in uh, cups and think about what it looks like when it's on your plate. Also, here's what it looks like when you eat a Greek yogurt. Six ounce serving of Greek, Greek yogurt has 18 grams. So you're starting to add on the grams, but don't get obsessed about it. Just make sure that you get 
a Greek yogurt in, a half a cup of cottage cheese, 14 grams, and then three ounces of skinless chicken. Then you have the hand, again, the hand measuring is your guide. Then you have a, oh, let me backtrack. The skinless chicken has 28 grams of protein. And then you have a half a cup of lentils. And that's nine grams. So here's here's your uh, plant-based option. A cup of milk has eight grams. And another link I'm adding to the show notes is where you find a more detailed breakdown of what it looks like portion-wise and what types of proteins you ideally add into your diet. So the link is in the show notes where you can actually get a clear picture of what the heck is, how much is what? 28 grams? I have no idea. So look at it because it's once you have it in front of you, it makes a lot more sense. And you can say, I have this protein. I eat salmon. I had milk. I had a half a cup of cottage cheese. So you know what you ate that day. So start logging, adding in your protein as well. And number three, of course, is eat lots of vegetables. Eat the rainbow. A diet high in vegetables, like especially greeny leaves, vegetables, broccoli, red peppers, among a ton of other, think rainbow, vegetables, does not only protect your bones, but also includes antioxidants. Super important, magnesium, potassium, and other trace minerals to help you maintain a healthy weight, a healthy gut. It's just vegetables is the way to go. So plant-based, add your protein, do your calcium, vitamin D, go outside, get some sun. If your doctor says you need a supplement, take a vitamin D supplement and combine it all together. Don't be overwhelmed. You can do this, right? Start writing down. Number four is we need to absolutely add weight-bearing and strength training workouts to our life. Think of it this way. Bone is a living tissue that responds really well to weight-bearing exercises. And you go like, Heike, what is weight-bearing exercise? Walking, hiking, dancing, running, Pilates and resistance exercises, such as lifting weights or using those stretchy resistance bands. That's also considered strength training. Exercise not only builds bone mass or bone density, I should say, bone strength, but increases muscle strength and balance, which will help us prevent falls in the future or make it less likely is probably more a better way to, to phrase it that you have a fall and then you have a fracture if you have low bone density. You know, I've been teaching Pilates for over 20 years and I also teach a program on Pilates for osteoporosis. And uh, there's so many things you can do with Pilates. Pilates is just a fantastic way not only not only to strengthen your muscles, but your increase your bone density. So there's some Pilates exercises that you can do on the mat that's without equipment, which is really good for your spine and your lower back to increase that bone density and that strength that we've talked about. If you have access to a Pilates reformer, it's one of those machines, you can combine the elements of strength and stretch at the same time. But I took a look at this and I said, how can I make this a lot more accessible for a woman that's over 50 and you're an empty nester or soon to be empty nester? You are on the go. You don't want to be stuck somewhere or have to look for a machine. So in my Fasted and Fit Club membership, I combined several Pilates inspired uh, Pilates exercises and I created workouts where we use the resistance bands. So really awesome. So we created the cables that you may see or or bands that you may be familiar with from the Pilates equipment if you've seen them before and we add the strength into it. So when I looked at the equipment that I have in my studio, I thought, how can I make this more accessible for you? Traveling with it. When I was in Hawaii, I 
worked with all my clients in groups online, sitting on the floor and having my bands with me and teaching basically Pilates from my vacation. People loved it. They're like, this is great. We don't need a machine. We can get stronger. We can stretch with the bands as well. And it's a lot of fun. I put a link in the show notes for you to check out the Fasted and Fit Club membership. It's so accessible. You go in there, you sign up month to month or a year, and then you just pick one of the videos to get started. Nothing fancy. Don't have to do them all. If you have a lot of time, you do a longer video for 20 minutes. If you have five minutes, you do a five minute video. If you have bands or no bands, there's something for everybody. And everybody from a beginner to an advanced exercises can find something that's right for you to not only strengthen the bones and the muscle, but also give more flexibility, which is a big key also as we're dealing with osteoarthritis. You want to strengthen the legs and the hips and improve posture. In my video, I show you good posture, standing exercises with simple leg exercises, or what's called the side lying sidekick series are part of it. When you do these exercises, you not only support your spine, but it improves your posture and increases or strengthens your bones. There's so many benefits to Pilates. You know, I love Pilates. I can't talk enough about it. I love exercise to begin with, as you may know or remember. And if you're new, I love exercise. But so there will be a link for this little video as well. So you can just start. Don't even think about it. Click play and go. But if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, you must take care to avoid activities that include bending forward from the waist, twisting the spine, or lifting heavy objects. So bending forward is like picking something heavy off the floor with straight legs and a straight back. No bueno, as I would say sometimes. So this is a no-go. Twisting the spine excessively is... You have to move differently when you have been diagnosed with osteoporosis. And then lifting, lifting heavy objects. And most of the time, I found that people lift something as crazy as it sounds out of their trunk. And that either causes a, a muscle spasm, can cause fractures, because you're not supported and you're bending forward and lifting something heavy out of the trunk. Now, on the other hand, if you've been diagnosed with arthritis, osteoarthritis, you have to compensate for the limited movement in your joints. And you may start with the video that I mentioned earlier. So go check back for the link and get mobilized the joints. And always, always, always check with your doctor. Determine whether a certain exercise or exercise program is safe for your spe specific medical situation. We're all so different. What your friend has may not be what you have and doing her exercises just to avoid to go into the doctor and having to sit in the waiting room and uh, you know dealing with all this doctor business, do it. It's your health, it's your body, it's your responsibility. So don't futz around. Uh, on the other hand, exercises like swimming and bicycling are really great to help build strong muscles and they have a, an awesome cardiovascular benefit for your heart. So they're super good, but they're not the best for building bone because there is no impact. There is no ground force. Swimming, you're suspended. So if you're going to the pool and do water aerobics, you need to add something else to your exercise regime that is weight bearing. Bicycling is not weight bearing. You're sitting on the saddle and your hands are on the, on the handle. There's some benefit to strengthening the hip, but it's again, not bone density building. So keep that in mind. But other than that, these are great exercises. Although I'm not a good swimmer, but I love bicycling. And number five is keep a healthy body weight. As mentioned a little earlier, being underweight increases the chance of bone loss and fractures. So you're more likely to end up 
probably on a calcium supplement, but you need to be aware of that. Extra weight, on the other hand, can cause problems for your bones and joints. On the other hand, losing weight can reduce the risk of arthritis and falls. Keeping a healthy body weight is not just good for your bones, but also for your overall health. So don't wait to get started to boost your bone health, to relieve the pain in your joints, to live healthier and more aware when it comes to osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. Like I said, there's so many similarities, but also so many differences. So make sure you get enough calcium and vitamin D, eat lean protein, eat lots of vegetables, add weight-bearing exercises and strength training into your workout, and keep a healthy body weight. I want you to pick one of the strategies I talked about today and get going. Just pick one. Do maybe the hands if you have osteoarthritis in the hands or start walking more if you have osteoporosis. But if you're not sure where the heck you should start and you know you say, Heike, you told me all about this calcium in the food, but I'm not really sure then you might grab my 5 for 50 Kickstarter guide. The link is in the show notes for you to get ideas of at least get started building a healthy lifestyle for you over 50 and beyond. So the second half of our life is here. It's rocking and we want to live it to our best and healthiest that we possibly can. So with this, my friends, I am out of here and I will see you next week on the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Please reach out to me on Facebook. It's Heike Yeats Pursue Your Spark. On Instagram, it's Heike Yeats. And you can find me all over social media. Just type in Heike Yeats and you can find a lot of information of how to create a healthy and fit lifestyle for the woman over 50 and especially for an empty nester that's ready to rock the second half. Ciao, have a most amazing day, and I'll see you soon.